Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Today's video is brought to you by nobody, because I don't do those sponsorship ads. I don't do the things that annoy me in other videos. Anyway, today, um, people have been wanting me to get back on this and uh, do some more tests on the little True SDX, trying to solve the splatter issue that I saw with my, uh, my testing earlier. I got an email from uh, Manuel, DL2MAN, the, uh, one of the designers, and uh, he says, Guido and me were joking today about a startup message that says, never test the True SDX audio in near field. On a near field receiver, the single sideband signal is so strong that the small artifacts of the digitally processed signal in the True SDX becomes audible. Well, first off, um, I made sure I wasn't overdriving the receiver uh, when I did those tests. I was looking at the signal meter. I, I uh, had everything positioned and the air spy was far enough back that I was not overdriving it, but we'll continue here. In a normal QSO setting, there is so much path loss involved that these artifacts are well attenuated below the noise floor and hence not observable. Uh, note that every signal that is digitally processed in bold has this limitation. It is called quantization noise. I know what he's talking about there. Um, if you digitize audio, um, and with lower bitrate audio, you could hear it like in the earlier days of 8-bit sampling. You'd hear a little aliasing, a little sort of crinkly, tinfoily kind of sound. That, I think that's what he's referring to. Uh, these noise signals in the background of the main signal, it is only when you start amplifying the signal that this noise becomes apparently observable. Um, and at the end of this, he says... Um, best is to access a remote receiver and check your audio. You'll see the difference immediately. So he's talking about something like a web SDR or some remote receiver that's far away out of the near field. Uh, so I did just that. I spent uh, some time over the past few days hoping and looking for propagation to a, a web SDR. And this morning I had real good propagation up to one in San Diego, hundreds of miles away. So I did a test. Okay, so as Manuel suggested, we're going to use a remote SDR to monitor the signals, and we're going to do a comparison test again, A to B, using the ICOM 705 set to 5 watts, the true SDX, my doublet antenna. Right now I'm on the 705, and we are on a SDR that's up by San Diego, hundreds of miles away. And, uh, and we got somebody near us, but I want to go up a little bit, I think. Let's go up to 160... Two. Now we're in a clear area. All right. First up, the ICOM 705 running five watts. Um, I'm going to start audio recording over here on the SDR so that we can play it back. Audio recording start. Okay. And we'll watch the waterfall as we transmit. This is the 705. This is KB9RLW testing. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. On an ICOM 705. Okay, that's a nice clean signal. Uh, nothing going to the lower sideband, and we're rolling off right where we should. This is KB9RLW testing. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. On an ICOM 705. I'm going to switch the doublet antenna over to the true SDX and we'll do the same test. This is KB9 RLW testing. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. This is the true SDX. KB9 RLW clear. This is KB9 RLW testing. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. This is the true SDX. KB9 RLW clear. And we can clearly see it is splattering way up into the uh, upper sideband and it's throwing garbage out into the lower sideband. Let me stop the recording and download that so we can listen to the audio clips. But uh, yeah, it's uh, not, nothing to do with near field or far field. I mean, that's hundreds of miles away and it's definitely still splattering, so that is not it. Sorry, Manuel. So now that I know that it's not the near field, far field thing, um, I'm going to look at a setting in here. Uh, the clipping looks like the finals are being overdriven. 
or under biased. And there is a transmit drive setting uh, in the uh, in here. It's the only thing I can see that could possibly be related to this. Some people have suggested your filter's too wide. Well, the audio rolls off. I've, I've looked at the audio spectrum in Audacity, and the audio is rolling off at 2 kilohertz. So there's nothing above 2 kilohertz to modulate, so it doesn't matter if I'm transmitting with a 4 kilohertz filter. Um, the audio rolls off at 2 kilohertz. It, it, it wouldn't matter. So let's look at this transmit drive. It is set at the default of 4, and I've had several people that have contacted me. Some see splatter, some don't. Uh, varying degrees of splatter, and they're, I would assume that they're probably all set at the default, um, unless they specifically went in and changed it. But I'm going to mess with this setting, and we're going to see if that makes a difference. So as before, I have GQRX running. We're back to my original setup, which I now know is accurate. Uh, what we saw on the web SDR is the same as what I was seeing uh, locally. I've got the Air Spy. Um, the radio is hooked to my dummy load. The Air Spy has a small whip on it, so it's picking up the leakage from the dummy load. It's not overloading the receiver. I can see that on GQRX, we're not overloading the receiver. So we're getting a nice, clean representation of the transmitted signal. And uh, I'm going to try this. So first off, here is um, the uh, default setting of 4. This is KB9 RLW testing, and we are at the default setting of 4 on the True SDX. And we'll stop the recording, and we'll stop GQRX so we can look at it. And as you can see, it's splattering badly. Um, it's throwing stuff way out, 3 kilohertz into the upper sideband where it should be suppressed. And, uh, wow, um, almost 10 kilohertz into the lower sideband. So now I'm going to change this transmit drive setting. We'll take it down to 3. And we will do the same test. This is KB9 RLW testing, drive level set to 3. And it's still splattering. Alright, we'll take it down to 2. This is KB9 RLW test, uh, drive level set to 2. It's getting a little bit better, but it's not making much of an improvement. So I'm going to go ahead and see what happens in the other direction. We'll set it to 5. This is KB9 RLW test, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, and it's much worse at 5. So uh, let's take it all the way down to uh, 1. And this is KB9 RLW testing, 1, 2, 3, 4, drive level of 1. And I'll stop the recording, we'll stop GQRX. Um, even down at 1, it is still splattering. It's not as bad, so that was improving things, uh, but uh, it's definitely not the fix. So, uh, something else is going on. I have an idea. Okay, here's my idea. A few weeks ago I did a video where I showed you how to update the firmware on the radio using Linux, and at Manuel's suggestion, I downloaded the beta. Um, I'm wondering if what we're seeing is a bug in the beta firmware. So I just came in here and I just downloaded the uh, release firmware right here and I'm going to flash that into the radio and then we'll try the test again. Okay, we're back. The beta firmware was 2.0M. I'm now on the release firmware which is 2.0I. Transmit drive is set to 4. Uh, same test setup. GQRX is running. I'll start it recording and we'll do our test. This is KB9 RLW testing. Uh, it's still splattering. And it looks to be about the same. All right, let's take the transmit drive down to three. KB9 RLW testing, transmit drive at three. And now we'll take it down to four, or two, I mean. KB9 RLW testing, transmit drive at 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. All right. Transmit drive at 2. KB9 RLW testing, transmit drive at 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, yeah, we still aren't fixed. It's not firmware. It's not transmit drive. 
So that's not it. Um, wasn't near field versus far field. We saw that it was still splattering on the remote web SDR. Um, it's not the transmit drive level, although that improved things. Might get it to a usable state though by bringing the drive level down to two. So that could be a workaround. It's still splattering a little bit, but it's not as apparent. Uh, so that might be a workaround. I'm still wanting to find the problem though. Uh, it wasn't the firmware version. I thought maybe the beta firmware had a bug. Nope. Uh, it's got to be something to do with my build. Now I've heard from, since I did these, these videos, I've heard from a lot of people and uh, it's real hit or miss. Some people see splatter, some people don't. Um, it doesn't seem to matter uh, as much on the transmit drive level. A lot of people are just at the default of four, you know, and they may or may not see splatter. There was a guy with a clean signal, perfectly clean signal that was at the transmit drive level of four. So it's got to be something finicky about the hardware and there's something wrong with the hardware. So I'm going to put this aside for a while because, you know, I've done enough on it right for, the, for a while. Um, in a few days or a week or two, maybe I'll come back to it and I've got an idea. I'm thinking maybe since the RF board and the digital board are sandwiched, you know, real close together, maybe some RF is getting into the digital board and I might make a shield to go between the two um, to help reduce that and see if that helps. And I'll, of course, check all the coils and the solder connections and, you know, really go through it. Because as I said at the beginning of the series, and I, a lot of people didn't catch this, and I've, I've had comments along those lines. Um, yeah, buying the kit and building it yourself is the best way to make sure everything's done right to your satisfaction. I wanted to document the experience of buying the pre-built unit, which is what I did, unfortunately, I got one that was not put together very well. And you go back and watch the series if you really want to know the whole story. Um, you'll, uh, they're, they're close together. Just scroll back through my videos. You'll see that there's like five or six of them that are just, you know, a few weeks apart. Um, anyway, I'm thinking that there's still something wrong with the hardware on this unit, you know, because I've heard from people that have no problems at all and nice clean audio. So don't discount the radio yet. It's a great CW radio, great little QRP CW radio. The single sideband and AM and FM is kind of a bonus. And uh, I'm, I'm not upset or I'm not uh, disappointed. You know, I was looking for a good CW radio. The fact that it can do single sideband is just a bonus. So anyway, um, Somewhere down the road, two or three weeks from now, I'll, I'll get this out again and, uh, and tackle this problem again. But I have other things that I want to do, uh, so I need to get going on those. So the next video will hopefully be some 3D printing related stuff if I can get the parts in that I've ordered. Uh, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.